Navigating the financial landscape can feel like trying to read a map without a compass. But don't worry, it's not your fault. If you're here, you're already taking a crucial step forward. We're about to dive into four strategies for mastering market trends, stay away from crazy consumerism, and save more money. These strategies will revolutionize your approach to money and empower you to make savvy financial decisions and achieve financial freedom. So make sure to watch the video till the end to fully understand this financial strategy and also subscribe to the channel. Researching prices and mastering market trends are essential skills for anyone looking to save money. With prices constantly changing and new deals popping up every day, it's more important than ever to stay on top of the game if you want to make the most of your hard-earned cash. When it comes to saving money, one of the biggest challenges consumers face is feeling overwhelmed by all the different prices and market trends out there. It's easy to get caught up in the noise and end up missing out on some amazing deals. I mean, have you ever seen a product you want? only to find out it was cheaper last week or that there's a better deal available if you just wait a little longer, it's frustrating, right? You start to feel like you're constantly chasing your tail, trying to stay one step ahead of the game. And it's not just prices. Market trends can be just as confusing. One day, it's all about sustainability, and the next, it's all about convenience. It's hard to know what's really important and what's just a passing fad. Add to that... The fact that prices can vary wildly depending on where you shop and when you buy, and it's no wonder people get overwhelmed. You start to wonder if it's even worth it, if it's just going to be a hassle to try and save a few bucks. And that's exactly what companies are counting on. They want you to give up and just pay the price they're asking. But I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. With a little bit of know-how and the right strategies, you can master market trends and find the best prices every time. So, how do you actually do it? How do you research prices and stay on top of market trends without losing your mind? It's actually easier than you think. One of the most effective strategies to master market trends is to use comparison tools. Overconsumption has become a widespread issue in today's world fueled by the ease with which we can access products and the relentless stream of enticing deals, with our mobile phones effectively turning into mini shopping malls. It takes just a few taps to add items to a virtual basket, and in as little as 24 hours, they're delivered to our doorsteps. This convenience, coupled with aggressive advertising, has led many to fall into the habit of constant purchasing, often buying things they don't really need. To navigate this consumer-driven landscape and master market trends, one of the most effective strategies is to use comparison tools. These websites and apps allow you to compare prices across different retailers, helping you find the best deals and avoid the pitfalls of impulse buying, which so often lead to unnecessary spending and overconsumption. Let me give you an example. I know a family who was in the market for a new TV, they had done their research and knew exactly what they wanted, but they were torn between two different models. By using comparison tools and following market trends, they were able to find a deal that saved them over $200 off the original price. And it wasn't just about the money. They also ended up getting a better TV with more features and better reviews. That's the power of mastering market trends and researching prices. It's not just about saving money, it's about making informed decisions that benefit you in the long run. So what's the takeaway here? Mastering market trends and researching prices is an essential skill for anyone looking to save money. If you're wondering where to start, Google Shopping is a popular and comprehensive price comparison tool. It allows you to search for products, compare prices from various retailers, and filter results by price, brand, and other criteria, making it easier to spot the best deals without succumbing to the temptation of buying more than you need. Another excellent option is Price Grabber. This tool provides detailed price comparisons across a wide range of products and offers features like price alerts and product reviews, helping you make informed purchasing decisions and resist the urge to overconsume. In a world where shopping has become almost too easy, 
Using these tools can be a powerful way to stay mindful of your spending, avoid the trap of overconsumption, and therefore save more money. The next strategy for mastering market trends is to follow reliable sources. Now let's talk about how consumerism and misinformation work. Imagine you have two friends giving you advice on shopping. One is consumerism, always excited and urging you to buy the latest and greatest things. This deal is amazing! You need to get it now! Consumerism says, making you feel like you're missing out if you don't act quickly. The other friend is misinformation, who confidently shares tips and insights that sound helpful but are often misleading or just plain wrong. I heard this is the best product on the market, misinformation claims, even though it's based on rumors or outdated information. If you rely too much on these two friends, your finances can quickly spiral out of control. You might end up buying things you don't need or spending more than you should because you're being pushed and misled in the wrong direction. But what if you had a third friend reliable sources? This friend doesn't shout or pressure you. Instead, they calmly provide accurate information, helping you see the big picture. Here's what the experts are saying. Reliable sources tells you, guiding you to make well-informed decisions. By listening to reliable sources, you can start to see through the noise created by consumerism and misinformation. You'll find the best deals, avoid unnecessary purchases, and feel confident in your choices. It's not about being an expert shopper. It's about being aware and taking control of your finances, making decisions that save you money and give you peace of mind. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more topics like this, comment below, save money, so I know. All right, moving forward to the next strategy for market trends is price comparison strategies, but first let's see how consumerism and fictional reality work. Consumerism and fictional reality are like two actors in a cleverly scripted play, drawing you into a world where wants are disguised as needs and desires are dressed up as necessities. Consumerism plays the role of the enthusiastic promoter, constantly encouraging you to buy more, spend more, and upgrade what you already have. It whispers that happiness, success, and fulfillment are just one purchase away. Meanwhile, fictional reality is the set designer, creating a carefully crafted environment where everything seems perfect and desirable. This fictional world is full of idealized lifestyles, where products promise to solve all your problems and enhance your life in ways that are often too good to be true. In this performance, fictional reality is built by marketers and advertisers who create a polished, often exaggerated portrayal of life with their products. Social media, influencers, and glossy advertisements all contribute to this illusion presenting a version of reality that's just out of reach. They show you the latest gadgets, fashion, or experiences as not just desirable, but essential to your happiness and social standing. This distorted reality can make you feel inadequate, leading you to believe that buying more is the only way to keep up or fit in. However, this carefully constructed fictional reality is just that fiction. It's a storyline designed to make you feel a certain way, to prompt you to make emotional rather than rational decisions. And when consumerism and fictional reality work together, they can lead you into a cycle of constant spending, chasing after an ideal that doesn't really exist. One of the most intriguing aspects of consumerism is how it aligns with seasonal trends, further fueling the narrative of fictional reality. Seasonal changes are like the plot twists in this play, influencing market prices and creating new reasons to spend. For instance, during Thank the holiday season, the fictional reality crafted by advertisers is one of warmth, joy, and generosity, best expressed, of course, through buying gifts and decorations. Prices are often inflated, with the illusion of deals and discounts masking the reality of increased spending. Similarly, during the back-to-school season, consumerism encourages parents to buy the latest school supplies and gadgets, often under the guise of preparing their children for success. Summer brings its own fictional reality, where vacations, outdoor gear, and fashion are portrayed as essential for creating the perfect experience. 
Understanding how these seasonal trends impact prices is key to breaking free from the grip of consumerism and fictional reality. Marketers know that by creating a sense of urgency or aligning with seasonal emotions, they can manipulate demand and drive up prices. But by recognizing this pattern, you can learn to anticipate these trends and make smarter purchasing decisions. For example, Waiting until after a peak season to buy certain items can lead to significant savings, as retailers often discount leftover stock. You might be wondering, how can you navigate consumerism to save more money? The answer is simple, my friends. To combat the world of consumerism and fictional reality, you need to step back and see the performance for what it is, a carefully crafted show designed to influence your behavior. By following reliable sources, Staying informed and understanding seasonal trends, you can take control of your finances and make decisions that align with your true needs, rather than the fictional ones being sold to you. In essence, when you become aware of how consumerism and fictional reality work together, you can break free from their influence. You can start making purchasing decisions that are not driven by emotional manipulation, but by careful analysis and thoughtful consideration. This awareness not only saves you money, but also gives you the confidence and peace of mind that comes with being in control of your financial destiny. The next strategy to master market trends is the role of supply and demand in pricing. In the intricate web of market economies, the forces of supply and demand serve as the invisible hands that orchestrate the ebb and flow of prices. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for mastering market trends and making informed decisions, whether you're an individual consumer, a business owner, or a policymaker. Let's delve into the fundamental role that supply and demand play in determining prices, with a specific focus on how consumerism impacts family economies, the production cycles of major fashion brands, and the underlying economics of labor and pricing. We will also explore potential solutions to address the challenges posed by these dynamics. Supply and demand are the bedrock principles of economics shaping the behavior of markets across the globe. Is supply and demand a necessary evil in our economic systems? At its core, the law of supply and demand posits that the price of a good or service is determined by the relationship between its availability, supply, and the desire of buyers for it demand. When demand for a product increases while supply remains constant, prices tend to rise. Conversely, when supply increases and demand remains unchanged, prices typically fall. This seemingly straightforward relationship becomes more complex when considering factors such as market competition, consumer behavior, production costs, and external economic forces. The interplay between supply and demand not only influences prices but also drives the allocation of resources, the pace of innovation, and the overall direction of economic growth. The question is, is supply and demand a necessary evil in our economic systems? Supply and demand might seem like a necessary evil, but in reality, they are more like the invisible hand guiding us through the complexities of the market. These forces are fundamental to how our economies function, determining prices, allocating resources, and driving innovation. Without them, we'd be lost in a chaotic sea of uncertainty, unable to gauge the true value of goods and services. Now let's shift our focus to consumerism and its impact on family economies by understanding how market trends may prevent you from saving money. Consumerism, the cultural drive to acquire and consume goods and services in ever-increasing amounts, has profound effects on the economy, particularly at the household level. In modern economies, consumer spending accounts for a significant portion of economic activity. However, this relentless pursuit of material goods often comes at a cost, especially for families. For many households, consumerism can lead to financial strain. The pressure to keep up with societal expectations, whether through the latest fashion trends, gadgets, or lifestyle upgrades, can result in overspending and mounting debt. Credit card usage, 
easy access to loans, and aggressive marketing tactics by corporations further exacerbate this issue. Families often find themselves caught in a cycle of earning to spend with little left for savings or investments. Moreover, the psychological impact of consumerism cannot be ignored. The constant bombardment of advertising and the societal emphasis on material wealth can lead to feelings of inadequacy and stress, particularly when individuals are unable to meet these expectations. This, in turn, can affect family dynamics, mental health, and overall well-being. Many people get caught in this vicious cycle called debt slavery, also known as debt bondage or peonage, is a form of modern-day slavery where individuals are forced to work to repay debts. This practice occurs when a person pledges their labor or services as security for a debt. As a result, the debtor becomes trapped in a cycle of unpayable debt, with their freedom and autonomy severely restricted. Here's a thought-provoking quote by Morgan Housel. Spending money to show people how much money you have is the fastest way to have less money. This quote captures the irony of consumerism and the pitfalls of trying to impress others with material wealth. By the way, check the video below about the book The Psychology of Money, written by Morgan Housel. All right, now let's shift our attention to the fashion industry since it provides a clear illustration of how supply and demand dynamics, coupled with consumerism, shape market prices. Fast fashion brands like Shine and Zara have revolutionized the industry by offering trendy clothing at low prices, with new collections being introduced at a breakneck pace. These companies have mastered the art of responding to consumer demand swiftly, producing and distributing new items in a matter of weeks, rather than the traditional months-long cycles of high fashion. Shine, a Chinese online fast fashion retailer, epitomizes this model. The company operates on a direct-to-consumer model, leveraging data analytics and consumer feedback to produce designs that are almost guaranteed to sell. By using low-cost labor and materials, Shine can offer rock-bottom prices, enticing consumers to buy more frequently. This strategy has proven incredibly successful, particularly among younger consumers who are drawn to the brand's affordability and constant influx of new styles. On the other hand, we have Zara. Zara, part of the Spanish Inditex group, employs a similar approach, but with a slightly different twist. Zara's just-in-time production system allows the company to respond to market trends almost instantaneously. By keeping production runs small and relying on a sophisticated supply chain, Zara can quickly restock popular items or discontinue those that don't sell. This creates a sense of urgency among consumers, driving them to purchase items before they disappear from shelves. However, the success of these brands comes at a significant cost, particularly in terms of labor and environmental sustainability. The low prices that attract consumers are made possible by outsourcing production to countries with lax labor laws and low wages. Workers in these factories often face grueling conditions, long hours, and minimal pay. The environmental impact is equally concerning, with the fashion industry being one of the largest polluters globally, contributing to water waste, chemical pollution, and textile waste. Despite the cheap labor costs associated with fast fashion, the expenses incurred by these brands in bringing their products to market are far from negligible. Marketing, logistics, and retail costs constitute a significant portion of a brand's expenditures. Additionally, the constant need to innovate and produce new collections drives up research and development costs, particularly in areas such as trend forecasting and material sourcing. Moreover, while these companies might save on labor, they often invest heavily in digital infrastructure and supply chain management systems to ensure their operations are as efficient as possible. For example, Shine's success is largely attributed to its advanced use of data analytics, which allows the company to predict consumer preferences with remarkable accuracy. Similarly, Zara's investment in logistics, including its proprietary distribution system, enables the brand to deliver new products to stores in as little as 48 hours. 
These investments, while necessary for maintaining competitiveness in the fast fashion industry, also highlight the paradox at the heart of the business model. Despite the low prices charged to consumers, the overall costs of running a fast fashion brand are substantial. This paradox is often obscured by the sheer volume of sales these companies generate, which allows them to maintain profitability even with thin margins. Now let's discuss labor practices and consumer responsibility. The role of supply and demand in pricing isn't just about economics. It also raises significant ethical questions. The fast fashion industry, in its quest for low-cost production, often exploits workers in developing countries. Reports of poor working conditions, child labor, and insufficient wages are common. These practices are driven by the need to keep production costs low to offer the cheap prices that consumers demand. From a supply and demand perspective, such labor practices result directly from consumer behavior. As long as there's high demand for cheap, trendy clothing, companies will continue to minimize costs, often at the expense of workers' rights. This creates a moral dilemma for consumers, who must weigh their desire for affordable fashion against the ethical implications of their purchases. Consumers have more power than they realize. By choosing to support brands that prioritize fair labor practices and sustainable production methods, consumers can drive change in the industry. However, this requires a shift in mindset, a move away from the culture of disposable fashion towards a more conscious, responsible approach to consumption. How has the digital age transformed the dynamics of supply and demand, particularly in industries like fashion? The digital age has transformed the dynamics of supply and demand, especially in industries like fashion. The rise of e-commerce, social media, and data analytics has given companies unprecedented access to consumer behavior data. This enables brands to tailor their offerings more precisely, predicting trends and adjusting production levels in real time to meet demand. For instance, the use of artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning allows companies to analyze vast amounts of data, identifying patterns in consumer preferences and purchasing behavior. This information informs product design, pricing strategies, and inventory management. By aligning supply more closely with demand, companies can reduce waste, optimize production, and enhance profitability. However, this precision also has its downsides. Constant monitoring of consumer behavior can lead to more aggressive marketing tactics, pushing consumers to make purchases they might not otherwise consider. Additionally, the emphasis on speed and efficiency can exacerbate the already significant environmental and social impacts of industries like fashion. You may be wondering, what are some potential solutions to address the challenges posed by the complex interplay between supply and demand, consumerism, and ethical considerations? One of the most effective ways to mitigate the negative impacts of consumerism and fast fashion is to promote sustainable consumption. This involves encouraging consumers to buy less, choose quality over quantity, and prioritize products that are ethically produced and environmentally friendly. Governments, NGOs, and brands themselves can play a role in this by raising awareness about the consequences of overconsumption and providing incentives for sustainable choices. The next effective way to tackle the ethical dilemmas in labor practices, companies can embrace fair trade. This means ensuring workers receive fair wages, work in safe conditions, and have access to benefits like health care and education. Certifications like Fair Trade and the Ethical Trading Initiative provide guidelines to ensure supply chains are ethical. Imagine a world where your morning coffee not only wakes you up, but also supports a farmer's child's education. Now, that's a win-win. Another effective way to tackle the ethical dilemmas in labor practices is by leveraging technology for transparency. Technology can be a game-changer for transparency in supply chains. Blockchain, for instance, can track products from origin to consumer, shedding light on production conditions. 
This holds companies accountable and empowers consumers to make informed choices. It's like having a crystal ball that reveals whether your favorite shirt was made ethically or not. Who knew tech could be so virtuous? On the other hand, governments can be the unsung heroes by regulating industries to ensure fair labor practices and environmental sustainability. This could mean stricter labor laws, enforcing environmental regulations, and offering tax incentives for sustainable practices. Imagine regulations that curb excessive advertising and consumer manipulation, because who needs another ad convincing you that you need a fifth pair of identical sneakers? Finally, companies can also take the lead by adopting corporate social responsibility, CSR practices. This means going beyond profit to consider the broader impact on society and the environment. Brands like Patagonia and Stella McCartney have said exactly